from all unrighteousness and father we confess right now the words that came out of our mouth that weren't pleasing the thoughts that came across our mind that weren't pleasing we confess it all we confess it all we confess it all oh we confess it all we confess it all and we're sorry lord 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 my Savior, my Lord, you're my Savior and my Lord. Have your way. Glory, 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 glory.
Good morning and welcome to the New Hope Missionary Baptist Church live stream channel. We invite you to get up and call a friend and tell them that New Hope is on live. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And now, our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Robert L. Jeffrey Sr. Everybody clap your hand, come on. Praise God, praise God. Let's bless the Lord this morning. Let's bless him with all our hearts. Let's bless him with all our souls. Let's bless him with all our spirit. We invite you right now to call a neighbor, call a friend, tell them New Hope Baptist Church is on live streaming through Facebook and, uh, and through our Zoom channel. So call a neighbor, call a friend, tell them New Hope is on at the air live. Praise God. Let us all in the sanctuary just stand as right now as we begin to praise the Lord. Let's give him some praise. Why don't you put your hands together right now as we prepare to give God some praise. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that everything that has breath, give God praise. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I, I don't know about you, but I came to church this morning to give the Lord some praise. Amen. Amen. So wherever you are, why don't you just put your hands together and clap them and give God some praise. You might be in your bedroom. You might be in your living room. Just put your hands together and give God some praise. If you're in the sanctuary, put your hands together and give God some praise. He's worthy. How many of you know he's worthy this morning? How many of you know he's worthy? How many of you know he's worthy? If you know he's worthy, just say he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Come into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures through all generations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let everything, let everything, let everything, let everything, let everything, let everything that has breath, let everything that has breath, let everything that has breath, that has a mind, that has a brain, that has a determination, that has a knowledge that Jesus died, got up on the third day morning, that he rose up from the grave with all power, all power in his hands, that we are saved this morning by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Through our faith, that not of ourselves, it is a gift of God that we should boast. So let's stand right now. Let's get on our feet. Put your hands together wherever you are. Just give him some praise. Praise him. 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 Praise him on the mountain. Praise him in the valley. Praise him. Praise him. If you're sitting by yourself, don't have a friend in the world. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. I tell you right now, He's a way maker. I tell you right now, He's an open door. I tell you right now, He's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. I tell you right now, He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I tell you right now, He's a deliverer. I tell you right now, He's a savior. He's a redeemer. He's a sanctifier. Hallelujah. Why don't you? 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 Get up. Get on up. And give God some praise. If you can't stand up, raise your hand. If you can't raise your hand, pat your feet. If you can't pat your feet, just move a little. Just move a little. Hallelujah. Let the Holy Ghost. Let the Holy Ghost. Come over you. Shut up, my God. In the name of Jesus right now. In the name of Jesus right now. In the name of Jesus right now. I speak the anointing on your life. In the name of Jesus right now. I shower the anointing over you. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are healed. You are delivered. You are set free. Praise him.
Away. 
praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise Him. Praise Him. Let's bow our heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. We, we, we welcome your spirit in this place. We welcome your Holy Ghost into this place. We welcome you, God. We welcome you. We welcome your spirit into our hearts. We welcome your spirit, hallelujah, into this sanctuary. We pray, God, that your spirit would fall on every living flesh in this sanctuary right now, Father. Let your will be done. Let your truth, hallelujah, manifest the atmosphere. Hallelujah. We claim the atmosphere this morning as we worship you, God. We not only claim it in here, we claim it outside of this space. We claim it throughout this community. We claim the atmosphere in the mighty name of Jesus. And we lift you up. We know that you have all authority and power in your hands. And we just claim, hallelujah, the victory. The victory, hallelujah, is yours. Not ours, but yours. We give you the victory. The victory that's going to happen. The victory that's yet to come. The victory over the demonic demonic spirits. The victory over any weapon that the devil will form against us. The victory, God. The victory, God. The victory. The victory. We claim it in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The same victory you got when you got up on the cross and when you came up out of the grave. Same victory, God. We claim it right now. We claim it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We claim victory. Hallelujah. Victory this morning in the name of Jesus. Let the church say amen. So I just say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise him this morning. Hallelujah. And he entered the ship and passed over and came unto the, his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick with the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, Matthew 9, beginning with the first verse. Matthew 9, beginning with the first verse. I'm sorry. And behold, they brought him a man sick of palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son of God, son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven. And behold, a certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Where for think you evil in your hearts. But whether it is easier to say your sins be forgiven you or to say rise and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Thus said he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up your bed, and go unto your own house. And he arose and departed to his house. And when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto them, the man. And, and as Jesus passed forth from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipts of custom and said unto him, follow me, follow me. And he arose and followed him. Praise God. Let us remain standing right now as our praise and worship leader comes back praise God and takes us hallelujah on this journey that we're going on this Sunday morning this journey of praise amen hallelujah, hallelujah. somebody say amen amen <laughs> praise the Lord everybody praise the Lord everybody praise the Lord everybody there it is yeah lift up your praise praise the Lord everybody come on you can do it whether it be clapping of your hands can shout with your mouth praise the lord everybody praise the lord everybody hallelujah thank you jesus the song says my soul cries out hallelujah anyone have a hallelujah in this spirit oh. do you have a hallelujah in your spirit come on shout it out let me hear you shout hallelujah Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The song says, When I think about what you've done for me, how you died just to save a wretch like me. When I think about what you've done for me, how you died just to save a wretch like me. 
They hung him high, they stretched him wide He hung his head, for me he died They hung him high, they stretched him wide He hung his head, for me he died That's why I sing, my soul cries out to save a wretch like me when I think about what you've done for me how you died just to save a wretch like me they hung him high they stretched him wide he hung his head for me he died they hung him high they stretched him wide he hung his head for you and me he died Oh, my soul. 
that's your part. Come on. Come on. Come on, cry out right there. Come on. Come on. From the depths of your soul, cry out to your God. He will hear you. He will hear you. Come on, let me hear you. Say, my soul. My soul. Lift your voice. Say, my soul. My soul. My soul. Say, my soul. My soul. Y'all sound so good. He's hearing you today. Say, my soul. Sing, baby. Say, my soul. Come on, this is part of praise and worship. Today. Be exalted, Lord. So during this time is when you cry out to God with your mouth, even in the heart of your mind, if you're concerned, if someone hears you. Hallelujah. The Bible declares, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Psalm 100, the first verse. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. How many need him? How many need him today? Don't be embarrassed. How many need the Lord today? Well, let's do what the Bible says. Come before his presence with singing. Let's do what the Bible says. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. It didn't say when things are going well. It said make a joyful noise. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I'm yet enduring. But I choose to do what the Bible says. I will, I will make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. This is your part. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Come on, whatever your noise is, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. We can do this. Make a joyful noise. Come on, he hears you. Yep, make a joyful noise. He hears us all at the same time. Make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise. Joy, joy. Don't allow your situation to dictate your praise to your God. I will, I will. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast, her boast, her boast, her boast in the Lord. The humble, any humble people in the house, the humble shall hear thereof. Woo! And woo! The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Whee. Come on. Oh, magnify the Lord with us. Come on. Magnify the Lord with us. Magnify the Lord with us. And let us exalt his name together. We're going to lift it up for a little bit. While we transition, the song says, uh, right in that key, I will bless thee, oh Lord. Sing if you know it. I will bless the Lord. Come on. It's a declaration. With the heart of heart of thanksgiving. Oh yes. I will bless the Lord. Come on. Lift it up, I will. I will bless the Lord.
Give him, give him a blessing. Bless the Lord right now with your mouth. Bless him with your mouth. Bless him with your hands. Bless him with your heart. Give God all glory. All things comes from the Lord. It is he that has made us. Not we ourselves. We are his sheep. Hallelujah. 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 Bless him this morning. Praise God. Praise God. We thank God for our praise and worship. We thank God for praise and worship this morning. We thank God. Hallelujah. We thank God. Right now, we're going to have our announcements for the week by our... Our communications team. Amen. Good morning, New Hope. The announcements for the week are brought to you by the New Hope Media team, and they are as follows. New Hope's annual symposium will take place on Saturday, September 30th at 10 a.m right here in the church sanctuary. All New Hope members are invited to attend in person or by a secure conference call. To receive the conference call information, contact our church secretary, Sister Cassandra Oaks, at the church office at 206-323-4212 or by email. All DIAGNA board chairs and ministry leaders are reminded to submit their information packets prior to the meeting to our church clerk, Sister Cheryl Peterson. And again, New Hope, we look forward to seeing you on Saturday, September 30th at 10 a.m. Save the dates for the 7th Annual Prayer Revival Conference. The prayer ministry team will be presenting their annual conference beginning on Thursday, October 26th with a praise and worship service starting at 6.30 p.m. Continuing to Friday with another prayer and worship service in the evening, Saturday will feature workshops in the morning and then a praise and worship service in the evening again. And then they will close out at our Sunday morning worship service at 10.45 a.m. More event information is to follow. If you have any questions, contact the prayer ministry chair, Deacon Doris Anderson. Clean Greens Farm and Market has its fresh produce giveaway on Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. 
right across the street from New Hope at 1116 21st Avenue, Seattle, Washington. On Saturdays, you can pick up your fresh produce and vegetables from our volunteers, and also you can inquire about becoming a CSA. If you have any questions about this program, contact Sister Breon Scott or see their website at cleangreensfarmandmarket.com. And we look forward to seeing you on Saturday at 11 a.m. Join Clean Greens Living live on Tuesdays at 12.30 p.m. It's hosted by Breon Scott and it's sponsored by Clean Greens Farm and Market. You can call in your thoughts on the Rainier Avenue Radio Hotline at 206-290-9685 or watch on the Rainier Avenue app or on Facebook. Listen at www.rainieravenueradio.world and we'll look forward to seeing you on Tuesdays at 12.30. Join New Hope each and every week in our online meeting space. On Sunday mornings, Christian Education meets at 9 a.m. If you have any questions, contact the chair, Sister Shirley Alexander. Our prayer line meets on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Fridays from 6 to 7 p.m. Also, on Wednesday, our corporate prayer meets from 6 to 7 p.m. as well. If you have any questions, contact any one of our prayer warriors at prayer at nhmbcseattle.org. The Associate Men's Group meets in the Sanctuary on Tuesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. for fellowship and prayer. Join us in New Hope's online meeting space located in Zoom.com. Our meeting ID is 832-162-3541, password 100-1949. And our phone and listeners, dial 253-215-8782. Announcement forms can be found on our website and are accepted until Friday at 8 p.m. to be included on our Sunday broadcast. Praise God. Church, say amen. amen. Praise God. Right now, we're going to have our offering. Praise God. We ask our ushers to come forth and deacons to assist with the lifting of our offering. Amen. If you have an offering to give this morning, we ask you to give your tithe and offerings at this time. You can give them on Cash App. You could give them on Giveify. If you're not present in the sanctuary, you can mail them to the New Hope Missionary Baptist Church, 116 21st Avenue, Seattle, Washington, 98122. Praise God.
Let us all stand as we prepare to thank God for these gifts. We ask Apostle Duckworth to come forth and give prayer. Testing. Father, we stand in your presence to say thank you for the gifts, to say thank you for the ultimate gift of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for our pastor, first lady. Thank you for our entire church and all visitors. We thank you for the offerings that have been given. Now, Father, in your presence, we release, according to Jehovah Jireh, in the name of Yeshua HaMessiah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, a divine blessing on all that have given from the heart today. And may those that had a desire to give and do not have, may an uncommon blessing fall on you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we stand throughout this sanctuary on holy ground, blessing this offering. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Right now is prayer time. And those of you who would like to come to the altar for prayer, you may come. We want to pray for deliverance. We want to pray for any, anything you're going through. I believe God has a way out of whatever you're going through this morning. Those of you on the, on the line, uh, those of you who are watching, why don't you bow your heads and, and, and believe God for deliverance. Believe God for that he will make a way through your storm, through your crisis, he is a way maker. Hallelujah. Will you believe with us this morning here at New Hope that God will make a way for you through your crisis? Whatever you're going through, whatever storm you're going through, say with me right now the storm that I'm going through is not bigger than the God I serve. God rules over that storm. Praise God. Will you believe that with me this morning? That God rules over your storm? That God is able to calm your storm? That God is able to deliver you from your storm? And deliver you in your storm? Praise God. Will you believe with me this morning? As we come to the altar here at New Hope. If you desire to come to the altar, just come. There is no storm that God can't deliver you from or in or through. I know you feel that you can't make it. I know you feel that this storm is worse than the others. But I've come to tell you, I'm a living witness. There is no storm God can't lead you through. God can't get you through. There's no storm that God won't bring you through. 
none. I want you to believe this morning in the power and authority of God. You can continue to sing. Just continue to sing that song because that's somebody, that song is going to put into somebody's spirit this morning. So we have no way of knowing the joy. We have no way of knowing what's in their hearts. But we know who you are. We pray now that you would minister to each one of them. As you minister to those in the congregation who now stand in need of prayer. Let your manifestation, let your power, let your power, let your spirit, hallelujah, cover them. They need healing, heal. If they're lost to the maze, 
complex ways, tribulation or difficulty. Show them a way out. Open the door. Show them the already open door that you prepared for them even before they were born into the world. Lord, if they just need to know your presence, touch them now, Father. Those who are in need of prayer, touch them now, God. Help them to know, God, that earth has no sorrow, absolutely no sorrow, that there is no pain, no sorrow, no tribulation on this world, in this world. Heaven can't heal. Hallelujah. Heaven can heal right now. Heal the broken heart. Heal this despairing heart. Heal the travailing heart. Let your spirit now just manifest its place, itself on this place, God. Hallelujah. And now, Father, we thank you. We raise our voices and our hands in praise and thank you. Thank you for helping us discover that you've already done what you said you'd do then. We thank you. We thank you for bringing us into this place, for bringing us into this service. We thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you. We thank you for the liberating power of your Holy Ghost. We thank you. We thank you that we're still alive. 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 In spite of what the devil tried to do, in spite of all the weapons formed against us, we're still here. We're still able to give you praise. We're still able to exalt your name. And so, Father, we thank you for answering our prayers. But thank you. We thank you, God. We don't know how you're going to do it. We don't know when you're going to do it. We don't know what way you're going to do it. But we know you're going to do it. Because you said you'd do it. In the mighty name of Jesus. So we thank you. And we give you honor. And we give you praise. In the name of the one who was crucified. In the name of the one who died. In the name of the one. Hallelujah. Who came down through generations and born in a manger. Wrapped in swaddling clothes. Healed the sick and raised the dead. In his name. In his powerful name. Who got up on the third day morning. In his name. In his name. In his name. In his name. In his name, uh, in the mighty powerful, in the supreme, uh, in the glorious name, uh, in the honorable name, uh, in the mighty name uh, of Jesus, uh, our Savior, uh, our Redeemer, uh, our Deliverer, uh, our Sanctifier, uh, our Waymaker, uh, our Hope, uh, our, our Hope, uh, our Light. Uh, he he is all and we give him praise yes yes we shout praises unto him in his name hallelujah in his name we pray to church say amen in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan, wherever you are, you dirty rascal, you got to flee. Tell me who can.
got the victory. Why don't you raise your hand and say, I got the victory. You have. I got. We have. The victory. Give me my praise. praise team and then the next voice you will hear be that, be that of the preacher for the day assistant pastor of New Hope Missionary Baptist Church Reverend Denisha Debada Laban amen praise God let's, let's, let's have church amen let's have church God bless you hallelujah 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 just for a little bit in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you, we have the victory. You were singing it in your seat, come on. In the name of Jesus, oh, in the name of Jesus, say that we'll have to flee. Oh, 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 tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name.
the Holy Spirit is giving you an opportunity to praise the name that saved your soul, the name that gives you the victory, the name that woke you up this morning in your right mind. Hallelujah. Let us lift and praise that name. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for all, for all he has done. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for the victory we have won. Hallelujah in this place, giving honor to that gracious and great God. Ha! Giving honor to his precious son, our sweet savior, Jesus Christ. And giving honor <laughs> to the Holy Spirit who keeps us, who comforts us, who instructs us, who guides us into all truth. <laughs> to our remarkable pastor, the Reverend Dr. Robert L. Jeffrey Sr. First Lady Karen Jeffrey and the First Family. As we stand, let us pray together. Sweet Holy Spirit, we thank you for meeting us in this your sanctuary on this morning. Father, we pray that you will continue to breathe on us, move within us, and minister to us through your word and your spirit. God, that your spirit will restore us, will renew us, will transform us, will change us through your word of truth. In Jesus' name, amen. We turn to God for a living word of healing on this day. Our scripture comes from Mark chapter 9, verses 20 through 24. Mark chapter 9, starting at verse 20, we'll be reading through verse 24, and I will be reading from the New Living Translation. And the word reads in this wise. So they brought the boy, but when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion, and he fell to the ground, writhing and foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy's father. He replied, since he was a little boy. The spirit often throws him into the fire or into the water, trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. What do you mean, if I can, Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. As you take your seats, we will consider the topic, what do you expect? What do you expect? Look to the person nearest you and just ask them, shrug your shoulders if you need to, what do you expect? There is a direct correlation between our expectations and our reality. 
Our expectations reflect our beliefs and our hopes. In turn, those hopes and aspirations are reflected through our actions, our decisions, which point to our direction in life, which will land us ultimately at our destiny. To have high expectations matters. Having high expectations helped five-star, five-time NBA champion Kobe Bryant of the LA Lakers to keep shooting the ball even though he missed more shots than any other athlete in NBA history. Kobe missed 14,400 and 81 shots, but he stayed on the court and eventually became the fourth highest scorer in NBA history. It pays to have high expectations. In the year 2000, an unknown state senator from Illinois ran for U.S. Congress and lost. But he kept believing in his civic mission. And eight brief years later, he ran for the office of president of these United States and won, becoming the nation's first African-American president, two-term President Barack and First Lady Michelle Obama. It pays to have high expectations. We see this same practice of high expectations with our sister Stacey Abrams, who twice ran for governor of the state of Georgia, twice missed being elected, but kept believing in herself. She has shown us what it looks like to keep moving forward, even when you lose a bit of ground, to keep running, to keep expecting, to keep hoping, and to keep serving. There is an African proverb that says, when there is no enemy within, the enemy outside can do you no harm. There's another African proverb that says, smooth seas don't make skillful sailors. Having high expectations matters. What we expect is revealed through our actions in our ability to rise up even when we slip down, to get up when we fall, to keep going when we stumble, to rebound when we regress, to keep moving forward, to keep believing even when we're burdened. The Clark sisters sang a song that says, I'm looking for a miracle. I expect the impossible. By definition, the word expectation means a strong belief that something will happen in the future. Sounds to me like hope. <laughs> Sounds like what our ancestors have been doing for over 400 years now. Come on, 1619 Project. <laughs> our ancestors have been expecting. They have been audaciously praying that better would come. 
That's why Sister Harriet Tubman refused to accept slavery as her reality. She expected better, and her actions manifested her belief in liberation, which is still benefiting all of us to this very day. That's why Nelson Mandela refused to accept political imprisonment as his reality, <laughs> even behind bars for 27 years. That brother kept believing better would come. He kept expecting and planning for and working on his freedom and that of his people. Having high expectations matters. Brothers and sisters, it is better to be around people with high expectations than to be around those with low ones or with no ones. <laughs> but more than that, it is better to be a person who has high expectations, who believes for better in spite of your current circumstances to be a person whose actions match your belief for better, who knows that, doth, that it doeth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Glory to God. So as we enter this biblical text, this morning, we see a man who is struggling forward in his expectations. His current circumstances are bleak. His son has been suffering for years from a violent, satanic spirit that has that man's child bound. This father has tried everything to help free his child from this evil influence, including pleading with the disciples of Jesus to heal his precious son. Nothing has worked, but he kept on expecting. And three points arise from this text that helps us to move our faith from expectation to action to access. The first point we see is regarding alignment. <laughs> alignment. This man, this father in the text, aligned his expectations with the presence of the healer Jesus. Look at verse number 22. This father, after exhausting his search for healing everywhere else, <laughs> found himself in the presence of Jesus and said, have mercy on us and help us if you can. The dire and desperate circumstances of his life led him to the presence of Jesus. This father's heart was hurting for his son, and he desired healing, deliverance, and wholeness for his child. In our lives, beloved, circumstances and situations have us also hurting and in need of help. Perplexed and puzzled, hard pressed on every side. Sometimes it is a child or a grandchild that has us pleading for God's help. Sometimes it is a matter on our jobs or with our health or with our finances or our relationships or our schooling or legal matters or housing difficulties or church folks or the viciousness of Seattle streets or things 
that we keep struggling with over and over again. Life sometimes has us shaking our heads. I don't know, one songwriter says, why I have to cry sometimes. I don't know why I have to sigh sometimes, but there's gonna be a perfect day. Trouble, get out of my way. I don't know why, but I'll understand it by and by. That was the testimony of this desperate father. I don't know why I stand in need sometimes. I don't know why, Lord, my poor heart bleeds sometimes, but I'll find out by and by. In this parent's plea, we see uncertainty. We see a bit of insecurity. He says to Jesus, help us if you can. <laughs> you see, this father had just witnessed the disciples of Jesus powerless to cast out the spirit. So he wasn't sure if the master teacher of the disciples could help either. <laughs> Sometimes our faith resides right next to our insecurities. <laughs> In the morning, we're speaking faith, but by that very evening, we are faltering and failing forward. <laughs> That's when you press your way into the presence of Jesus, where the power of God is, the power to deliver, the power to heal, the power to restore, the power to strengthen, for God's strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. <laughs> Not only, not only must our expectations align with the presence of Jesus, but the second point we see is regarding agreement. <laughs> the Father came not only into alignment with the presence of Jesus, but this Father came into agreement with the word of Jesus. <laughs> What was the word of Jesus? It's there in verse 23. What do you mean, if I can, Jesus asked. Then Jesus said, anything is possible if a person believes. Jesus countered this man's if with another if. Jesus said, the matter is not if I can heal, but if you can believe. It is a matter of our willingness to believe. According to your faith, be it done unto you. So this father had to come into agreement with God's word. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain do we bear? All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer, agreeing with his word and his will for our lives. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Jesus said, all things are possible to those who believe. The possible of our lives must align with the plans of God for our lives. <laughs> God did not remove Paul's thorn in the flesh, but God rather perfected his strength in Paul's weakness. Beloved, God may not move the mountains in your life, but he'll give you the strength to climb them. God may not remove the haters from your life, but he'll give you the grace to deal with those haters. 
He may not remove the tension and strife, but he'll give you the answers to turn away from wrath. He'll give you the mercy to deal with the mess. He'll give you the courage to deal with the conflicts. He'll give you the peace to deal with the pain. He'll give you the anointing to deal with the attacks. Does anybody know that God will give you what you need when you believe? <laughs> hey, he'll give you the answer on how to know how to deal with family and fake folks and friends and foes. He'll give you the wisdom to choose better next time and this kind of believing takes radical faith it takes radical faith to believe that though our outward man is perishing our inward man is being renewed day by day it takes radical faith to forget those things which are behind and to reach forth unto those things which are before. It takes radical faith to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. <laughs> because of the current circumstances may not yet look like what you hope for, you have to expect and keep on expecting. Your loved ones may be addicted right now, but believe that all things are possible. Your child or your grandchild may be wayward and making bad decisions right now, but believe that all things are possible. You may be financially broke and you may have filed for bankruptcy, but believe that all things are possible. Your body may be in pain right now or that of your loved one, but believe that all things are possible. Your heart may be grieving right now, but believe that all things are possible. You may have lost your job. You may have been passed over for that promotion this time, but believe that all things are possible. Your so-called friends may have turned their backs on you and bitterly betrayed you, but believe that all things are possible. God's grace is sufficient for everything that you face. God's grace is sufficient for everything that you face. Stand behind the cross. Believe God. Be in the presence of Christ and all things are possible as you believe. Hallelujah. So not only must our expectations align with the presence of Jesus, not only must our actions agree with God's word and his will for our lives, but the last point deals with access. Alignment, agreement, and access. <laughs> this bold brother in the text, the father of this child, accessed his victory through his expectation. Look at verse number 24. The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief and the very next verse Jesus delivered the man's son from the demonic spirit this father had an expectation for greater faith he had a desire 
for greater ability to believe God. When we acknowledge our inadequacy and our insufficiency, that makes room for God to work. <laughs> that makes room for us to say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. <laughs> if thou withdraw thyself from me, whither shall I go? <laughs> this was a prayer of reliance, of surrender, of giving our all over to him. His prayer was, Lord, I believe, but help me to really believe. He said, Lord, I do believe, but there's something in me that doesn't fully believe. He said, Lord, there's some unbelief in me. This father had a spirit of humility. He had a meekness to admit that there's some unbelief in him. Like a ship that's tossed and driven, battered by an angry sea. He said, when the storms of life are raging and the fury falls on me, I wonder what I have done to make this race so hard for me to run. He said, then I say to my soul, soul, take courage. <laughs> because Lord, please make a way somehow. Make a way for me to believe you fully, wholly, with my whole heart where there is no room for doubt, no room for worry, no room for anxiety. God, help me to fully believe in you. His prayer was, God, guide me to greater faith. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need your divine help. Lord, I need you to help me to believe. This brother was honest. This brother was humble. And he was hungry. He was hungry for change, for transformation. He was hungry for a miracle. Beloved, are you honest enough? with God? Are you hungry enough for change, for transformation in your life, in your home, on your job, in your family? Are you hungry enough for radical change that comes only through the Spirit of God? And are you humble enough to seek God's help. This brother didn't care about the crowd. He didn't care about the onlookers. Yes, they may have talked about him and they may have talked about his son, but he didn't care. He pressed his way into the presence of Jesus and he aligned with the word of Jesus and he then gained access to his victory because he was honest and he was humble and he was hungry. He was hungry for peace in his home. He was hungry for healing of his child. He was hungry for joy to be restored in his soul. He was hungry. And is that your prayer today, beloved? Is your prayer, Lord, for the sake of my deliverance and that of my family? Help my unbelief. Lord, help my unloving nature. Lord, help my mean streak. Lord, help my wandering eye, which turns to a wandering hand, which turns to a wandering heart. Lord, help my petty ways. Lord, help my cold and stingy attitude. 
Lord, help my unbelief so that I can go out and help somebody else. So that I can go out and heal somebody's hurt. Lord, help my unbelief so that I can be gentle and loving and not bitter and rude. Lord, help my unbelief so that I can run and not get weary, so that I can walk and not faint. Lord, help my unbelief so that my living will not be in vain. Lord, help my unbelief so that I can be fruitful and effective, productive in every good word and work. Lord, help my unbelief so that whatsoever I do will prosper. Is that your prayer on today? Is that what your heart is declaring like that of that father? The man immediately cried out to the Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. And instantly, Jesus spoke a word and the boy was healed. This man's faith was not perfect, but he brought all the faith that he had into the presence of Jesus. And he agreed with the word of Jesus. And with his faith in Jesus, he gained access to the victory he hoped for, to the victory he expected. Victory, beloved, is always spoken in terms of being won. Let us march on until victory is won. <laughs> because, beloved, it cost us something to gain the victory. <laughs> we have to contend for the victory. Second Timothy 4 and 7 says, I have fought the good fight of faith. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. <laughs> Beloved, what do you expect? What do you expect? What does your faith expect? Perhaps you may be misaligned a bit, seeking help in all the wrong places like that father did at the start of his journey. He had been seeking help in all the wrong places. That, beloved, was my testimony. I sought help from all the wrong places for so long in my life. I thought only if this person can help me. Only if this opportunity could turn things around. Only if this decision could be my best decision. <laughs> but I have learned to place my full faith, my whole belief in Jesus Christ the solid rock I stand because all of the ground is sinking sand. Beloved, I've learned to say, Lord, I need thee every hour. I need thee. Oh, precious Lord, I come to thee. No other help do I know. It was only in the presence of God and through the word of God and aligning my life and my actions with the word of God that I gained the victory in Jesus. Beloved, are you finding your expectations 
falling short time and time again, leaving you frustrated, exhausted, depleted, depressed, perhaps even a little resentful and bitter. Are your actions, perhaps, and your decisions lately not aligning in agreement with the Word of God and His will for your life? Because He has a plan for your life. And just like this father had to do, we have to get into the presence of Jesus. Hey, in order for something in our lives to shift, for transformation to take place from the inside out, God is giving you access to his presence to refresh your soul, to renew your joy, to restore your peace, to help you regain ground and rebound, to resuscitate and come back to life and life more abundantly. <laughs> Alignment, agreement, and access. Jesus came into alignment with his heavenly father in the garden of Gethsemane. And he said, not my will, father, but yours be done. He came into agreement with his father when he said, into thy hands I commend my spirit. He accessed the father. And in doing so, Jesus gave us access to the Father. When on an old rugged cross, he shed his perfect blood, and the earth did shake, and the curtain did tear from top to bottom, and we were redeemed, bought with a price. <laughs> Glory to God. So, beloved, God is ready to do exceedingly and abundantly above your expectations, <laughs> above what you can imagine. <laughs> he says, just come. Just come as you are. Come into alignment with his presence. Come into agreement with his will for your life. And come into the access of Christ. The blood that Jesus shed way back on Calvary has never lost its power. That fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins <laughs> is our access to our victory. If you recall in the story, the boy was possessed with a spirit that made him mute, that disabled his voice. Of victory and the enemy has oftentimes deceived believers into thinking that we don't need to praise God that it doesn't take all of that to express our praise and gratitude that it's something that we can just reflect on in our hearts <laughs> but the Bible that I read says in Joshua 6 four and five, that the instructions for victory was this. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the walls of the 
city will collapse. And a few verses later, in Joshua 6 and 20, it says, when the trumpets sounded, the army shouted, and the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So everyone charged straight in, and they took the city. God wants to hear your voice. God wants to hear your shout of victory. God wants to hear you say, thank you, Jesus, for delivering me, for blessing me, for keeping me, for guiding me, for protecting me, for loving me, for forgiving me, for giving me a second chance. God, I thank you. Hallelujah. You are my God. God wants to hear you speak a word of victory over your life, over your children, over your grandchildren, over your home, over your future, over your past, over yourself. God wants to hear from you. He wants you to declare the victory aloud with a shout, with a hallelujah, with a thank you, Jesus, with a Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I bless you at all times. Lord, your praises shall continually be in my mouth so that they will know that you delivered me, that you gave me the victory, that you broke the chains that had me bound. God, that you saved my life when the enemy, like a flood, tried to come in to destroy me. God, you saved me. God, you gave me my breath. Lord, you gave me your name. That at the name of Jesus, my soul was saved. My life was saved from death, from destruction, from hell, from depression. <laughs> God saved me. And the world will know it because I will tell it. Everywhere I go, I will tell it. Everywhere I go, they're going to hear my shout of victory. You didn't deliver me. You didn't keep me in the midnight hour when tears were flowing down my face and I didn't know what to do. God's Holy Spirit comforted my heart. He surrounded me with his loving kindness and his tender mercy. And he said, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. And he's telling you, it's going to be all right. Let the world know. It's going to be all right for you. It's going to be all right for you. <laughs> because you know how to press into the presence of Jesus. It's going to be all right for you. Because you know how to agree with the will of God for your life. It's not easy. It's not easy. Saying yes. It's not easy. But his Holy Spirit is your helper. And so as you say yes to the Holy Spirit right now, and that your life is a yes to God, he will give you the help you need. <laughs> he will. He will. He will give you the help 
that you need. Just like he gave help to that desperate father, to that father who said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. God gave him the help to believe. And he's saying to you right now, there are some areas in your life that you're still trying to build your faith around that it's hard to believe fully because for so long it's been like this. And this is not what you expect. But the Lord says that God's ways are not our ways, that his thoughts are not our thoughts. And so whatever you're going through, whatever circumstances are troubling you, God knows. He's there. Nothing shall separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Nothing, not life, not death, not tribulation, not persecution, not sickness, not hardship, not troubled and wayward kids, not divorce, not bankruptcy, not gossip, not naysayers and backbiters and haters not loss of loved ones that grieves your heart God said nothing shall separate you from his love which is in Christ Jesus our Lord so he's saying just live behind the cross near the cross Near the cross, live behind the cross. That is where your victory is. That is where your help is. Behind the cross that covers you, that keeps you. The cross that guides you, that gives you strength when you are weak that gives you hope when you are hopeless, that gives you help when you need it. Live behind the cross, and it just requires a yes, Lord. Yes, I will believe. In every area of my heart, of my mind, of my life, Lord, I will believe. You, no matter what it looks like around me, no matter what my thoughts say, no matter what the meditations of my heart may, may say, Lord, I will believe you. His spirit is ready to ever minister to you. That there is no moment in your life when you call him, that he will not answer. He will answer every time. So you have to learn to hear his voice. It may not be when you expect, but he is so faithful. He is so faithful to you to care for you, to work it out for you, <laughs> to bless you, to anoint you against the attacks, against the unbelief. We are stumping unbelief under our feet and we will believe God for all things in the name of Jesus. I speak that over your life right now. All things, hallelujah, 
will work together for your good. All things. All things. So walk like you believe God for all things. Talk like you believe God for all things. Smile when people talking about you like you believe God for all things. Forgive when people hurt you like you believe God for all things. Lift your eyes even when it's dark and dreary like you believe God for all things. Stand in confidence in every room that you enter like you believe God for all things. He's turning it around for you, but it's through your belief. It's through your ability to believe God. That is where the turnaround, where the transformation happens. It did not happen for that father until he was honest and until he was hungry and until he was humble. And he said, Lord, I need to believe you for more. And that is when it turned around for him. And this is how it's going to turn around for you, for your family, for your finances, for your faith, for your health, for your future. It's turning around for you. By faith. By faith. For you that are tuned in, for you that are here, let us say yes to this opportunity that the Holy Spirit has gifted and graced us with on this day. This opportunity to be a living epistle. That our lives from this day forward will be all faith in God. That when we when we feel any movement from our belief, we will be like that father who said, Lord, I believe, but Lord, help my unbelief. The Holy Spirit is gifting you right now with that prayer. Mark 9, 24. Etch it on your heart. Inscribe it on your heart. Mark 9, 24. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. The Holy Spirit with your belief can turn it around. Whatever it is in your life, in your body, in your home, on your job, whatever it is, you and the Holy Spirit know. Y'all know what it is. And he's saying, receive Mark 9, 24. And whisper that prayer. So that you can walk always in your victory in the victory that Jesus died, was buried, rose again, and is interceding at the right hand of God for you to have that victory. It goes beyond the natural, the physical. This is a spiritual victory that covers everything that concerns you. And everything that concerns you, God will perfect by your faith. And so we go forth changed, transformed, renewed, freed, healed like that child. Because 
of our alignment, our agreement, and our access to Jesus Christ. And let us go forward and help somebody else. Help strengthen somebody else. Help encourage somebody else. Jesus told Peter, when you are strengthened, go and strengthen the brethren. Go and strengthen somebody else. So we thank God today that his spirit from start of morning to evermore is upon you and with you to help you. We thank God and we'll bring up our pastor right now. To God be the glory. Let God hear your shout of victory right now in the name of Jesus. Let God hear your shout of victory. You are no longer muted. Hallelujah. 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 Why don't you all stand? Hallelujah. Thank God for this message. Thank God for this message. Thank God for this message this morning. Hallelujah. As the praise team sings a song for us. Hallelujah. We lift our hands to him today. Christ in your heart if you don't know him as your personal savior 
And those who are here in the sanctuary, if you don't know Christ as your personal, sa sa personal sa Savior, we invite you to receive him right now. After this powerful, powerful message, we invite you to get closer to the Lord, to raise your hands and to surrender to God. New hope, surrender to the Lord, surrender to Jesus, surrender to his mercy, surrender to his grace. We invite you to do that this morning. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this word. Thank you for this preacher, God. Thank you, God, for the ministry. Thank you, God, for the, the anointing. We pray, God, that the words will not we know that the words will be will land in places they should land and we know that sinners will hear and that people who need a blessing will hear and the people who need strengthening will hear and we just thank you for your word in the mighty name of jesus we pray the church say amen god bless you god keep you we're ready to go home not by might nor by power but by my spirit, by my spirit, saith the Lord. God bless you. God keep you.